Hi, we're from the University of Washington School of Medicine, and we're here to tell you it gets better. I'm Jennifer Jones Vanderlees, and I'm a family practice doctor, a professor, a kind of an activist, a dyke, a mama, a partner. Uh, my name is Shilpin Patel, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Washington. I work as a radiation oncologist on faculty here. My name is Peter Shalit. I am a medical doctor in Seattle, Washington. And I know a lot of us have had bad experiences with healthcare providers, and I think that being a part of the LGBTQ community sometimes makes that even harder. And I think we're just really here to show you that there is a large community of people that support you within the healthcare community. Know that you have the right to have competent, excellent access to medical care and know that even if you don't think there are physicians and other healthcare people like nurses or pharmacists who are out there who understand you or that want to work with you to keep you healthy, know that there are people out there. Easy ways to find an LGBT friendly physician are number one, ask friends. Another way is the Gay and, Lesb Gay and Lesbian Medical Association. A lot of big cities also have LGBT business associations and I get referrals from that as well. So those are just three uh, ways that you can find an LGBT friendly healthcare provider. It kind of became clear to me after a while that when I was working with LGBT folk, the reason why I was working with LGBT folk is because they weren't coming out to their doctor, they were afraid to, or or their doctor just wasn't uh, very accepting and open, or they had a previous bad experience in the healthcare system. And so it became clear to me that, that I could help my community even better if I became a doctor. So I went for it. I can remember feeling pretty scared and anxious to start medical school because I had a girlfriend at the time. I assumed that my classmates would be this very traditional and conservative group of people. I thought I would probably be the only queer person in the class. And when I got here, I really couldn't have been more surprised. I was pretty wrong about the people that, um, that I'm studying medicine with. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And a lot of that was because I didn't have good role models. And it actually took me seeing some role models and meeting some role models in the medical profession that led me to uh, decide that I wanted to go to medical school. I uh, debated very strongly in terms of whether I should go into medicine since I felt like medicine was very conservative uh, when I was uh, as an out gay man. Um, I really was struggled with the fact of where am I going to fit at the end of the day um, in this very conservative profession. I've been very fortunate in the fact that I feel like it's very welcoming actually. Uh, my staff and my, uh, my colleagues as well as my patients have responded phenomenally well uh, to uh, letting me be who I am. I think the message I really want to communicate is, is high school can be really challenging and if you're struggling in high school right now um, socially or academically, it doesn't really necessarily mean that you're condemned to failure. I actually was kicked out of high school and had to go back and graduate, um, and then went on to attend community college, and now I'm a medical student, so there's hope for you if you just don't quite fit in high school. Uh, being a gay man has been an incredible blessing because it's given me this very rewarding job uh, as a medical doctor, and uh, life's been very rewarding. I have had wonderful relationships, I have a wonderful partner, and I can't imagine uh, being any other way uh, than who I am. It gets better and it can get better today. Know that you're not alone. I'll tell you what I do. I take my wings with a heart that's